Hi Catherine, can you tell me a little bit about your current role? Currently I'm a clinical lead a community occupational therapist, sort of over some mid knots community services and we cover quite a wide range really from um, planning some of the discharges from the hospital and you can imagine how busy we've been in recent weeks um, and we'll continue to do that work. We'll do sort of rehabilitation, so it could be anything really from neuro to orthopaedic type stuff really. Um, we do quite a bit of um, sort of falls prevention, those sort of referrals come through to us. Uh, quite a lot of palliative care at home, a real a real mixed bag really. Anything that's within the, we see in the communities is what we pick up. So it's pretty wide. So we've, we've brought together a few teams to, to make this one huge community team. So my role at the minute is getting to make sure everybody knows each other and getting all those supervision structures in places and processes and a really rigorous triage process so we can see our patients, you know, first time, um, right time, right place. So that's one of the tasks for me and uh, obviously trying to encourage and promote student education for our, developing our workforce in the future. Fab. Um, can you tell me a bit about how you kind of got to this role, so your kind of career pathway, if you like? <laughs> Pathway. Well, I've been qualified a very long time. Back in 1994, I was the first year that Derby ran as a degree course, and I was the first graduate year that came through. So, um, so I went to, straight from school. So I was 21 when I came out uh, as a qualified OT, and we we had basic grades then. So it was like your first job. I guess like your band fives now. And uh, mine was in old people's rehabilitation. Predominantly then it was like strokes, it was before people really had, some places had stroke units, but this was mainly sort of like, I'd say, what would be a stroke unit really. So I had that, I had that for six months, and then uh, I moved into another six months of rheumatology. And the senior, I would remember that, because the senior OT left after three weeks, and I was responsible then for the ward and outpatient and all hand splinting, so a very steep learning curve, and that was quite scary as a basic grade. Um, and then I went into paediatrics for... Um, six months as basic grade and then I stayed and did a senior two post there and then I had the opportunity to do a bit of traveling um, so I went to work for a mission hospital in Kenya as an OT um, but also doing some sort of physio support work all sorts of things really I did there um, and then I went to work in Guyana South America for two years and that was purely pediatrics and I loved it because it was a, it really showed me how far I'd come in terms of confidence. Um, there I was making corner seats and hand splinting out of paper mache and just making it up whatever you could find on the road, you turned it into something. And I really <laughs> I love that because of no boundaries, off you go, you've got to do something. Um, I sort of remember sort of serial splinting a little chap, um, little baby with uh, talipes like club foot. And um, mm. I've never done anything like that before, I've never used plaster of Paris, but what do you do you know you, you give it a go because there's nobody else that's going to do it so you're a whole hoping to enable that child would be able to, to walk so I, I really enjoyed that experience um so after that a locum for a while i could recommend that that was really helpful in sort of building confidence i don't think i'd have done it if unless i'd done the work working abroad and yeah. it made me realize what i could do so i uh, locum for a while i worked in the private sector for a year in a private hospital um, that was sort of more orthopaedics and palliative care, done falls prevention groups, stroke outpatients. Um, and then I've come to, then I've probably in the last sort of 15 years have been community falls prevention work. Um, and now I sort of, as I expressed to you before, a really mixed wide group. And I love community, I love community therapy. Um, yeah, I found me, found my niche, it's taken me 26 years, but I found my niche. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Just it's yeah, so diverse. Just massively reflects the occupational therapy profession, really, doesn't it? It's amazing. Yes, the variety and take those opportunities are there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Would you, when you were a student, did you have an idea of a pathway, or was it you were open to kind of well, see what would happen? Yes, no. I tried a lot of people that did have an idea. I think because they were quite a bit older than me, quite a lot on that on that course at that time. So they had ideas where they wanted to be. I really didn't, to be honest. I'd actually really enjoyed mental health on placement more than I had physical, which is quite interesting. But I thought, you know, perhaps I ought to give that as physical another go. Perhaps it was just those areas. And um, of course, I've ended up staying if you, if you like physical health care. 
But what I really love about community is um, you really do get to use those that dual training in mental health services. Uh, absolutely. And um, I think that's where we're in a very um, honoured position, really, that we do a lot of work around mental health support and supporting people emotionally through physical disability. And we know if you haven't got, if you haven't got mental health, you haven't got physical health and if you haven't got physical health you generally haven't got mental health so you, you use those skills and I, I love the opportunity community to use those skills yeah fab have you got any top tips for students who are coming to the end of their training and about to, to go into the, the big wide world uh, of OT <laughs> top tips. um well I would say um I think I would if I was going for a job now as uh, band five I think the perceptorship program is I got to something I would be quite interested in looking at. Back in back in the day when I qualified, um, that wasn't around perceptorship, and right. um, you were very much this is your job, they're your wards, off you go, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what happened. And then if there was staff shortage or anything, they'd be sort of you were just sort of with a shortage there on the medical ward. Can you? help out there and can you help out there and um yeah. you know I, I remember being the basic grade one time when i was doing the old people's rehab ward i was responsible one time for four wards at that at one time and that was my first six months and thinking gosh you know there wasn't anybody i was only on this cottage hospital with another od so and she was off it was all mine you know? <laughs> um so i think receptorship i think has been a brilliant thing that's come along and that's what i'd say to anybody Every yeah. placement or every work you had you learn from when you take skills from the skills that I've used in paediatrics, I use quite a lot in adult services now. And then all about yeah. that normal movement really helped and special seating and you can transfer all the skills. It doesn't matter what area you go into, a lot of those skills you'll find transferable into other areas. But definitely I would be wanting to look at CPD program and perception and support. Because those I do remember those first two years of my early career being feeling quite quite anxious at times. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a similar experience for a lot of newly qualified OTs, definitely. Yeah. Brilliant. Is there anything you want to add at all? Um, I suppose what I'd say again to another OT uh, out there, because I think OTs are trying slightly differently now, because I know that with students, they look, look to encourage them sort of new roles that are emerging. Whereas I guess my generation was more trained for the NHS and social services. And I think that's really wonderful that you've had that opportunity that you, 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 your eyes are open to what else is out there. And I would say take those opportunities, give it a try, network, 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 network. It's who you know sometimes and in terms of who can help you and support you when it's a very small world OT. So um, definitely network, try things, try a bit of adventure. That's what I'd say. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.